I want to go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. Hallelujah. And I am going to read from chapter 37 verse 1. And I'm going to read, and so you guys can listen. Obviously, some of our technical difficulties are occurring today. But uh, Ezekiel was a prophet of God. Normally, a lot of people don't hear about these guys. You know, we know David, we know Paul, we know Peter, we know Jesus. Nobody knows like Amos and Obadiah. Like, who them? <laughs> I preached Nehemiah one week, and they were like, Pastor, Ooh, I never knew heard, who right? Nehemiah was. Or... Yes. But there are some wonderful nuggets buried in Scripture Amen. that you, 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 you got to, you know, study the whole Bible to get the whole thing. And so over the last couple of weeks, if you've been coming to church, we've been going into some areas. Mm -hmm. Amen. And um, the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. And so today I want to talk about Ezekiel. Now, just, just to give you a, uh, what's going on so you won't be lost in the story. This is the time, if you're following what's going on, the children of Israel were brought out of Egypt. Right. Amen. They were given a promised land. But God told them specifically that if you honor me and keep my commandments, then I will keep you as a people. Mm -hmm. But the minute you compromise and begin to do what everybody else does, you're going to have to, you're going to get what everybody else got. Right. Basically, God is going to take his protection and his hands off. And how many of you know the children of Israel, whenever they looked out to the rest of the world, they just wanted to be like the cultures they saw around them. They wanted to have a king like the rest of the world. Yeah. They wanted to serve false gods. Yeah. And I want you to notice something, right? It's something that I preach in a, in, in, in a message. The enemy cannot curse God's people. Right. That should make somebody excited. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I grew up in, 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 a, in a charismatic tradition where people often, you know, they would testify and say things like, pray for me, the devil is doing it. The devil can't do anything to God's people, and if he's allowed, notice the word, right. allowed, right. that means that God has a greater purpose right. behind it. Right. But the devil cannot curse God's people. You are absolutely blessed Hallelujah. because of whose you yes. are. Yes. You, you don't believe me. I showed you that. I showed you that when Balaam tried to curse God's people. Right. And he went several angles, right, left, in between, up, bottom. You pick an angle, it still won't work. I am blessed. Yes. I want you to think about uh, 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 Eve in the garden. She was blessed. I mean, she could have ate from any tree. Yeah. Eve could have made apple pie, <laughs> mango soa. That's for the Caribbean people, come on. What else? What's your favorite fruit? Strawberry. Strawberry. Somebody said pomegranate. Pineapple. All right. Cameron. Yes. She had the option to eat from every tree. But you know what the problem is with humanity? We never look at what God has allowed us. We always are looking at what he doesn't allow. It's true, it's true. You literally have the ability to enjoy life, but for some reason, this one tree. Now, she, the enemy, Satan, showed up in the story. If he had the ability to curse her, he could have just did it. But he couldn't just curse God's people. And so he did exactly what Balaam did. That's why when you get the revelation, Jesus said, I hate the doctrine of Balaam. Because what did the enemy do? He couldn't curse her, but he got her to curse herself. And so he tricked her into to making her think that all that God has given isn't enough. I want you to know, like Sister Stacy's testimony, whatever you have is what God is going to bless you with. Stop looking at what you do. What you don't have is making you depressed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What you don't have is make when you scroll all day, I ain't, I ain't went on vacation. Right. I don't got a nice car like that. You don't even know that's not their car. Right. They just saw it on the block and took a picture of it. Right. You don't even know that's not a vacation spot. That's somewhere in Long Island that looks nice. Right. 
Don't ever judge your life and make the enemy make you think you're missing out on life. Right. If you've got God, yes. God is waiting for you to see what you got so that he, remember the woman with the oil? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Bible said, what, what, the, the man of God said, what you got? She said, I got a little jar of oil. It's little. He said, that's enough. Get all the jars and just begin to pour. I want you to know when you begin to pour your life out, God will keep filling back in as long as you keep pouring. It's not what you don't have that God will bless you with. It's what you have. But what you don't have keeps depressing you because you keep chasing something that God never meant to bless you with. Right. Come on, somebody. That's why I don't, you know, I don't, you know, people always tell me, you ought to do this and ought to do that. Not listen to advice. But I know that if God is going to bless me, he's going to get all glory. Yes. Sometimes you think you need this and that. I've got everything I need to be blessed by God. Yes. And the enemy couldn't curse her. But what he did was trick her. He said, did God say that you shouldn't eat of this tree? Oh, no, God is tripping. God knows that the minute you eat, you're going to be like him. Mm. And the woman, when she saw that the fruit was desirable, the Bible says that she ate. And she somehow convinced her husband with the same logic. Yep. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know the Bible says creation fell when he ate. I mean, it, you know, when, when she ate, yeah, it's going to fall. But the point I'm trying to make right there is to say, at some point, that man should have stood up and said, God told me. Yep. As for me and my house, yeah. we going to honor God. Y'all yeah. ain't say nothing to me. What? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> In the church of God. <laughs> Men, where you at? When men fail to do what God tells them to do, you got broken homes. Broken homes, broken families. Broken families lead to broken society. Broken society lead to broken systems. That's why all this argument over systemic, you can change the system as much as you want. You can remove the, the, the status quo and put a different one. Right. The heart of man. Yes. Unless change, yes. the new system will fail. Yep. That's why God is not coming to build an earthly system. Right. He's coming to set up a kingdom. Yes. One way he does... <laughs> oh, God. It's going to get... I told y'all yes. They, they put the camera you. back on, right? So I really... <laughs> y'all understand what I'm saying? Right. Our God, unless the heart of the man change... Mm. Systems can't fix broken families. Yes. Men got to fix that. Y'all yes. ain't going to say nothing to me yes. in the house of the Lord. And until you fix the home, mm. society will always be a reflection of a, of a deeper problem. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is why now when we put things in society's hands, society now wants to redefine family. Because the enemy is at work knowing if I destroy family, yep. it's a wrap. Yeah. But how many of you know you are made in the image of God? Hallelujah. And God's got a purpose and a plan for you? Yes. If you're looking in this camera, I came to tell you God loves you. Amen. God cares for you. Yes. He made you. Yes. And he has the best for you. And Hallelujah. when you live for God, yes. you're not missing anything. Yeah, right. You're not losing out on anything. You're not a misfit. You know, some Christians run around, we call ourselves oh, yeah. misfit. Yeah. And I understand the concept because right. we don't fit in. But the truth of the matter is, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness yeah. thereof. Yes. We belong. Right. Anything anti-God is really the misfit. I will not live right. on the earth that my father created, Hallelujah. calling myself a misfit. Right. I belong here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And, 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 let me get to my word. Let, yes. let me get to my word. Let me, I told you I feel like preaching today. Yes. Hallelujah. In the book of Ezekiel, we get to one of those times where the children of God, they got their promised land, and they turn their backs on God. Mm -hmm. They start worshiping Baal. They're worshiping all these false gods. And as a result, God took his protection off the Babylonian empire came and swept them off into captivity right. Ezekiel is in captivity now this is a, when you read Ezekiel's life I'm going to tell you now God when God uses your life he makes you do some strange things mm -hmm. things that don't make sense right. Ezekiel's story start off with him seeing a vision 
the wheel within the wheel and the, 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 the chariot carrying the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Then from there, God had him doing what is called street theater. Weird stuff. Yeah. One day at the Day of Atonement, God made him uh, uh, act out the scapegoat mm -hmm. and tie himself at the side of the street and lay on his side for a year. Some of you saying, oh, man, that's some of us in the pandemic laid on our side. <laughs> for Time to go back to work, y'all. Time to go back. It's quiet in this church of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he laid on his side a year. And if I were to go further, God made him cook food. I ain't even going to tell you. Go search it. God made him cook food on a very strange thing. Hallelujah. To show the children of Israel that the food they're going to eat is going to be horrible because of their disobedience. And so he's living his life, and I'm going to go to one of his visions that he got today. Okay. Amen? Amen? And I'm going to read the scripture, and then I'm going to preach, and I'll get you out of here real soon. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me today? Yeah. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, this is what the word of the Lord says. The hand of the Lord was on me. Oh, God. Mm. How many of you, the hand of the Lord is on your life? Yeah. You got to know that. You got to understand this chapter 37. So a lot of strange things then happened in his life. Right. And he should have quit by now. <laughs> but you don't quit when you know the hand yes. of the Lord is on me. And he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. So I want you to get this picture. The prophet is walking in a valley. As he looked down, the Bible says it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones. He saw bones all over, mm -hmm. bones broken. These are not bones of animals. Mm -hmm. These are bones of human beings. And there were so many, they were all over him. And as he walked around, he saw the bones disconnected. It wasn't laid out like a skeleton, perfectly formed. It was just bones scattered everywhere. And God brings him into this place mm -hmm. to see this. And look at what the Bible says. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones. And then the Bible gives you this description. Bones that were very dry. Dry. And then God asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Mm -hmm. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I wish I had a church. He said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will be you will come to life i will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin and i will put breath in you and you will come to life then you will know that i am the lord so i prophesy as i was commanded and as i was prophesying there was a noise and i want to stop right there father bless your word yes, Lord. and cause your people to be transformed today yes. And never leave here the same. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If I were to title this message, I would title it this morning, The Drought is Over. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The drought is over. If you're a Nick fan, that's what you want to hear Randall <laughs> saying today. The drought <laughs> is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. The drought is over. When I say the drought is over, the drought is over. If you've ever been to a place where there's a drought, if you've ever seen places that have experienced drought, that means there is a holding back of the waters. That means the place becomes dry, right. desolate. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? It means the place no longer produces. It means the place has become worthless unless something enters back in this place will be dead right. nobody's buying a house here anytime soon right. 
Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There is nothing to be desired in an area where the drought has happened too long. Mm -hmm. There's nothing but hopelessness there. It is nothing but wilderness there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that would make you get up and say, this is my dream place because there's a drought. Hallelujah. What is true for places is true for people. And a lot of us, hallelujah, we are experiencing drought in our lives. Yeah. We've gotten to a place where it's dry in our life. Y'all yeah. ain't going to say nothing yeah. to me in this place. But let me tell you something. It happens to people where the people of God can end up in a place in their life where they find themselves in a dry, desolate place where nothing connects. The Bible says Ezekiel saw bones that couldn't connect to one another. Right. That means nothing was making sense. Mm. And everything was scattered all over the place. Right. Scattered to the point, the Bible says, where there's no flesh on it, no nothing on it, and the bones are dry. Mm. Do you follow that? Yeah. I want you to know that what's true for that is true for our own lives. How do you get to a dry place? How do you get to a place? And verse 11 tells you, tells you why the people were dry. They felt like God had left them and there was no hope. You see, whenever you live life and you get to a place in life where you become hopeless, right. and a lot of people ain't going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. When the time is ticking and you haven't accomplished certain things, right. when the words that were said to you as a child follows you forever, mm. oh, it's so sad, Sister Sherry. Yeah. We live in a world where people will tell their children, you're no good. Yep. You're stupid. Yeah. You'll never be nothing. Yeah. We live in a world where people will walk out on their children. Mm. Yeah. We live in a world that abuses children. Yeah. We live in a world and children become adults. Yeah. And they're trying, a lot of us as adults, the truth is we're trying to overcome a lot of our past. See, I don't get mad at people when they make mistakes. Right. I've learned when I was young, I, I used to be mad at people why they did what they did. Mm -hmm. But I've begun to realize that people do what they do because they probably never learned better. Yeah. Sometimes when you see a mother that's abusive, you got to check the mother behind the mother. Yeah. And, and, and what happens is in society, stuff is learned and taught and passed down. If you've never seen somebody who knows how to handle money, how in the world would, if you've seen somebody who's living in a busted apartment all their life, yeah. but they got the nicest car and the nicest rims, yeah. you're going to have a concept that as long as I look good, right. who cares if I'm broke? Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing that the guy in the t-shirt, his house is fly. Right. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in this place. You, 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 there, there's a, a definition in society of beauty that is put on women. Yeah. And I'm not telling you, listen, take care of yourself for health reasons. Right. But know that you are not in what you look like. But yes. this has been put on our young women. Yep. Oh, my gosh. With yep. these mediums of TikTok and all of that yeah. now. You click on that. These girls yes. are pressured. Yep. If you want to get a million views you got to show this and yep. do all this stuff. And all that pressure is on women to, 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 to be something that God never intended you to be. Yes. And people live that out and they grow and emptiness creeps in and hopelessness. There's another reason why people, hallelujah, end up in a dry place. The decisions you make. Y'all know my saying. You make your choices, and then your choices make you. Yeah. If you mad at life, <laughs> and you just want to say it's everybody else's fault, yeah. remember that whenever you point a finger, you got three here pointing right back at you. Um, Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. At some point, you got to take responsibility for the choices you've made. When you choose to sleep all day, you've chosen poverty. I ain't got nobody helping me today. When you choose to get married and want to flirt on the job, you've chosen 
trouble. Yeah. Don't trouble trouble, tell you never don't trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody who's been around me know. First, when I travel, mm. brothers know. Anybody that ever tried to mess with this marriage will know. They get the hello, God bless you. Are you anointed? <laughs> I don't play because I know that I got more to lose. Mm. But people make decisions. You make your choices, and then your choices make you. How do you end up in a dry place? How do you end up in a dry place? How do you end up in a place where nothing makes sense? You, you know, there's people in this room that life ain't making sense right now. Yeah. And the children of Israel specifically ended up in a dry place because they compromised on God. Yeah. And let me tell you, you might mess up in life with bad choices. Right. You might even have an abusive parent. Mm. You might even have an abusive spouse. Mm. You might have things that happen to you. Yeah. Those, God's hand can come right. in and change. Right. Right. But see, when you make a choice to compromise your relationship on God, yeah. you end up in a very, very dry place. Yes. That God, you have told him, I don't want anything to do with you. And you end up in hopelessness. That's why I don't play, hallelujah, yeah. with my salvation. Right. I just don't allow anything in these ears. Yeah. Because what comes into these ears yeah. is shaping this mind. Yep. Yep. Nobody wants to admit this. Mm -hmm. well, you know, like when I was a kid, my father used to say, why are you listening to that music? Yeah. Because that music had a lot of power on me. Right. When I listened to Biggie Smalls, I didn't feel like worshiping God right. or changing the community. Right. It's true. Yeah. All the killers and a hundred dollar bellas. Yeah. Come on, hallelujah. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me in this place. Y'all ain't say nothing. When I listen to certain things, hallelujah, y'all, come on. Yeah. When you listen to Joe, does he come and <laughs> right. taking you all on a journey? <laughs> Hallelujah. That stuff that make me want to say God is so good. Right. If I said it, I said it funny. God is good. Oh. <laughs> oh, Y'all know what I'm talking about in this place. And I'm not trying to tell you, you know, be rigid and all of that. You've got whatsoever things are pure. I'm not right. telling you secular or saved. I'm telling you whatsoever things are pure. But what you let in this mind, and I used to tell my dad, Dad, I'm just listening to the beats. Yeah. Until my dad got wise and he said, but you're getting the words for free. free. Yep. 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 When you choose to watch a Netflix show and you come out with a bug theology, you mix in a little bit of Netflix with a little bit of Paul. Yo, I seen a show, could it be? You know how many people come to me as a pastor? Pastor, you really think like we didn't have another life? Because yeah. I was watching a movie, right? And I see how this could fit with Paul. I'm like, you know what? You know, you know what? You know what? I bind the book of Netflix. Your documentary, your favorite news channel, if you sit and watch CNN all day, you really, do you really think? Right. Come on, guys. You really think Fox <laughs> News and CNN is just like, I'm going to tell them the truth. Yeah. Yeah, it got quiet again. <laughs> Don't mess with people news right, channel. Right, Don't mess right. with it. You really think right. your political party has got your best interests at heart? Right. Mm -hmm. How many laws you've seen signed in that should have been signed in? Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody going to say that. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> the Lord Jesus right. Christ. That's why you got to guard your heart. Yes. Because you can end up in a dry place, depressed. And when you are depressed in your house, the phone calls don't yeah. come like that. Because right. let me tell you why. People are like, when, you, you, when you're sick and alone, that's how you know who really love you. It's not that people don't love you. It's that they're trying to figure out how not to be depressed too. Right. It's nobody's job to sit there and make you happy. And you know, that's, what, that's the problem with, with when people get married. Yeah. People, people walk up and meet somebody and talk about, you make me happy. <laughs> you better be happy. Yeah. Ain't nobody yeah. saying nothing to me in this church of Jesus Christ. Right. Because that same person that make you happy, yeah. you make me happy. You make me sad. <laughs>
Stop looking for another human being to complete you. You aren't half. Yep. Yep. How many? <laughs> I could be real funny and ridiculous. You don't walk around as a half person. <laughs> Sherry, I love you, but you don't complete me. I hear you. Together, we complement each other for the will of God. Yeah. You Absolutely. understand what I'm saying? You, God, put us together for a purpose. If your marriage don't have purpose, That's true. well, I married because you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people's marriage don't have purpose. A lot of the men make it up every day. They come home, you know what I want to do today? Now, I don't want to be hard on a man because I was yeah. like that too. I, you sound a little hard. <laughs> but, I, but I sound like me, right? I come home, every day I got a new dream. Stop, 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 stop. Just go before the Lord for two weeks and come out with a plan from God. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Let me clean that up. Let me clean that up. Let me clean that up. What I'm trying to say is if you are not happy in God by yourself, what makes you think the other person wants the responsibility? To make you happy yeah. when you could. They just were with you two months. Yeah. You were with you 20 years. <laughs> you couldn't make you happy right. for 20 years. Yep. And now you want to take 20 years and put it on two months? Yep. It's not going to happen. Nope. I've learned to be happy in the Lord. Right. I've learned to let the Lord correct me when I'm by myself. Yeah. To work on me. So that when I'm the best me, she has the best me. Yeah. Not blaming her. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in this house. You don't think there's false. This, this ain't even got nothing to do with my message. This is how, how I end up in this marriage counseling area. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me come out of there. People end up in dry places. People end up broken. People end up divorced. People end up abused. People end up suicidal. People end up confused. People end up angry with God. Yeah. People listen to one philosopher and ready to quit on God. Yes. People read one book. Yes. People watch one History Channel uh, documentary and quit on God. Yep. People hear about some New Testament they found. Yep. All these years, 2,000 years of Christianity, you don't think nobody else ever know that stuff. You just hear it one time. Oh, the origins of this and yep. that. No, yep. no, 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 yep. no. The devil is a liar. Absolutely. And people end up in a dry place. But the one thing is when the children of God compromise. Let me tell you something, y'all. We live in a culture that keeps telling you that success is what they define it as. Yeah. That if you don't look like them, yep. if you don't drive what they yeah. drive, you don't have what they have. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I serve a God yeah. who I know shall supply yes. all my yep. needs. Yep. Hallelujah. All my needs. Yes. He didn't put me here to stunt on nobody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He didn't put me here to live this, this dream that they tell me I should live. He put me here to be free. Mm -hmm. Free from the bondage of sin. Yeah. And the world can't give that. Only God can give that. And here my man Ezekiel is walking around with dry bones. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even make sense. Right. It doesn't even connect. The bones aren't even connected to one another. The legs aren't even connected to the arms. Nothing is connected. It's scattered everywhere. Mm -hmm. And some of our lives feel like that. Right. Like there's no connection. There's, nothing is making sense. Do I have a witness in here? Sometimes yeah. you look at your life and it feels like this. Yeah. This is not making sense, God. How can I be your child and still struggle with all of this? Yeah. And you are in a dry place. Something needs to come back in. Yeah. Here's what the Bible said to Ezekiel. I'm almost done, y'all. Mm. Ezekiel, can these dry bones... Mm. Now, y'all got to get this picture. Give me this microphone here, Brother Isaac. Y'all got to get this picture. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Yeah. Ooh, the mic with me too. <laughs> Hallelujah. My man is walking around in a valley. The spirit took him out. He's in a valley of bones. Right. All he sees is bones disconnected, not connected to one another. And God asked him a question. Can these bones live? Mm -hmm. His answer was a brilliant one. I want to ask you the question. Do you think that what is dead in your life, that God has the ability to bring life to it. Yes. Yes. 
Because your answer, hallelujah, will determine your outcome. Right. What you believe will determine how you behave. Gosh, I'm going to say that over here. Yeah, yeah. What you believe will determine how you behave. And a lot of people would read this story and say, oh, yes, God can make these bones live again. You can believe that a man can walk in a valley of dry bones and cause them to live again, but you can't believe God will cause you to live again. The devil is a liar. Yeah. From today in the name of Jesus, yes. suicide has no more hold over you. The pressure got to go yes. in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. 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 Can you live again? Can you live again? Oh, you don't understand, Pastor. You don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand what they spoke over my life. You don't understand how much my mother said this. You don't understand what my spouse said. You don't understand how many times the bank rejected me. I was terrible in school. They told me I should have been this, this, that. I messed up. I got married so many times. My marriage has failed. I can, I can write a book on how to fail a marriage. I know everything not to do. I'm just waiting the time to pass. I'm just trying to get retirement and be gone. You were meant for more than that. Can your life live again? And the answer to that, my friends, Ezekiel answered. He said, Sovereign Lord, you know. And then God responds. Right answer. Right answer. How many of you know God knows your end? How many? Come on, somebody. Nobody knows your end. God does. And he looked up and he said, Sovereign Lord, you know. And God responds and says this, Jerry. Prophesy over the bones. Oh gosh, I'm getting ready to preach. What does that mean? Prophesy is another way of saying, begin to preach the word yes. over the bones. And this is what you say. Begin to say, flesh is coming. Begin to say, the joints are going to heal yes. up. Begin to say that things are going to connect things that didn't make right. sense. Yes, God. Oh, I heard another scripture say it like this. And we know yes. that God works all things Hallelujah. together. He, 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 yes. Oh my gosh. He brings the abuse. He brings the ugly. He brings yes. it. He brings the success. He brings it all together and knits it together. And he says, I want to take my time there. He tells him, he says, preach the word. Prophesy over the bones. I came to tell you, stop saying what everybody else is saying over your life. Yes, yes. Stop saying what CNN is saying over our nation. Yes. Stop saying what everybody else is saying over our culture. Stop saying what people have said over your life. You ought to prophesy over your life. God is for me. Yes. This is what you do. Who can be against me? Right. Nay in all these things. Oh, gosh, I wish I had somebody. You begin to say, yeah, I failed God. But God has never failed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My righteousness is like filthy rags. My best day is as equal as my worst day. But the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all unrighteousness. I am not my abuse. I am not my disgust. Come on, somebody in this house. I am not what you say I am. I am what he says I am.
connect them with that word that God is putting some things. See, when you yes. speak the word, yes. only then things come together. Yes, yes. As long as you ain't speaking the word, your foot over there, your head over there, your mind over there. You see, it's a disjointed man. But when you speak the word and put in priority, you're a whole man. I don't know who I'm talking to. This church a little too quiet for me. But I wish I had one or two people in here. He stepped out on the battlefield. 
and Goliath laughed. I'm telling you about people who got the wind. The Bible says Goliath laughed and said, what is this? I'm going to kill this boy and feed him to the God of salt in me, man. I'm Goliath, man. The Knicks need me. gotta go. If you're watching online, I want to pray with you today. Put your prayer request in the chat room. If you are in this room and you need a word of prayer, stand to your feet and lift your hands and just make known your request. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak to every person that is sick. You shall not die, but live. I speak to every person that is depressed that the depression would go. I speak to every person that is dealing with anxiety, low self-esteem, every voice from the enemy that would cause them, Father, to be in a dry place. Let the wind of God blow back in every dry bone and bring the drought to an end. No more dry place. I speak happiness into your life. Your days are numbered, but they don't have to be sad. They don't have to be depressed. I speak joy back into your life. I speak healing. I speak that your mind would be opened and transformed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I come against strongholds and struggles. I pray that you would break them. I speak life into every person who has ever gone through a divorce. I speak life into any person who's ever been abused. I speak
speak life into the life of every sinner that you may live if you've never asked Jesus into your heart pray with me say Father God I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of every sin you are Lord and Master and from today I give my life to you thank you for dying on the cross that I may live and arising from the dead so that I can have the breath of life in me in Jesus name Amen somebody give God a round of applause you may be seated in the presence of the Lord our God is an awesome God he's a good God I want to thank you everyone watching that has came to fellowship with us today and thank you every one of you that is in the house were you blessed today amen, amen. come on were you blessed today amen. i want to say to you that are watching please uh, register for one of our services and come on down and be part of what we're doing we're going to be back here friday night we're going to be back here sunday hey y'all we need a bigger building amen. we haven't even begun to let the amount of people that want to come back to church in the house People are fighting. I'm telling you, you can scalp your tickets outside of Church City. Amen. People want to come to church, and that's a good thing. People want to serve their God. And I'm going to tell you this. We need a bigger building, and we continue to raise funds and go towards that goal. If you've been blessed by anything we said today, if you've been blessed in the house, we would love for you to partner with us and sow into our ministry. We don't tell you what to give. We're a tithe tithing church we believe in tithing and if you want to tithe here we welcome that but we don't ever tell you what to give we leave that between you and the Lord but if you'd like to partner with us and help us help us get to the next levels that we believe we can get to we would love for you to partner with us all the ways that you can do that cash app church city USA or zell church city USA at gmail.com or just go to our website or if you are in the building, make sure you see one of the ushers before you leave if you would like to do it the conventional method. And we've got all the wonderful product, all the t-shirts and stuff that we, we, we put out that is just a blessing to so many people. So many people start conversations and ministries off of the shirts. Make sure you all visit our apparel. You can visit it online. Everything you sow goes back into the work of the Lord. Amen. And we want to thank you all for joining us. Amen. In the midst of crisis, we are focused on who Christ is. God bless y'all for watching. Amen. Those that are in the audience, remain seated for a moment. Amen. 